What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be doing some custom mods to your gaming mouse, showing you how to personalize it a bit and modify it to fit your needs. First off, we're going to be doing it with the Final Mouse Ultralight 2 Cave Town, turning it from this stock version into this customized one, as well as some mods you can do to pretty much any ordinary mouse, even something like the Razer Viper. We'll be changing the color of the shell, doing a wedding band mod, swapping with a better paracord, and adding our own skins. And then also what you'll see on the Razer Viper, again the skins, a paracord, a pretty nifty zip tie mod, and using aftermarket skates. All the stuff I'll be using today will be in the description down below in case you're interested in some of the parts that I use and stuff like that. But let's just get started. So first up, we have the Final Mouse Ultralight 2 Cape Town. And the mouse by itself, you know, it's pretty popular. But when it came out, I was just not a fan of the raw composite material and the burnt orange color theme. It's just not, you know, what I like. So the first thing we're going to do to open up the Ultralight 2 is get a hair dryer and lightly apply some heat to the bottom two mouse feet. Once they're warmed up a bit and the residue inside starts to loosen, you can take the bottom two feet off because that's where the only two uh, screws are to keep the shell together. So once the screws are removed, start to pry apart the top from the bottom shell. And since there's no RGB in this mouse, we don't have to worry about there being any ribbon cables inside getting damaged when you take them apart. It might feel unnatural, but the shell comes unclicked pretty easily. So once you open it up, this is where it all begins, and we're gonna start from here. One thing I would recommend doing is a quick sandpaper job on the sides of the mouse if you use those foam stickers. I'm talking like a real fine grade so you're not actually sanding down the mouse, but more so just removing any potential residue that might be there, which might mess up the spray paint later on. Now one of the easier things to knock out for this is gonna be swapping the scroll wheel. Since that is also burnt orange, there's actually a pretty nifty trick. You can go on Amazon and pick up a pack of silicone wedding bands and they fit perfectly. I'll put the ones that I use down below, it comes with a pack of a few different colors and stuff. With this one, we're gonna be going teal. This is the 9.5 millimeter. You just pry off the previous band on the scroll wheel and put the new one on and it fits perfectly. And now it's gonna match. An Ultralight 2 is made of this raw composite material for the shell, which is kind of like a light tan or like a um, ivory kind of color. But again, I want to make it white. So what I did was I took the shell apart. I applied two coats of this satin bright white spray paint. Let it obviously dry in between. Uh, very light coats as well, since the material is already pretty light as it is. Then afterwards, I applied the uh, satin crystal clear finish to make it so it's not, you know, that like sticky tacky finish uh, that you see with usual spray paint stuff. So in the end, it's all white now and it doesn't stick to my fingers or anything like that. It's a very smooth finish. So once the shells were done drying, I brought it back in, put it back together, and now I could apply the para cable. Now this is not a tutorial. You can look up a tutorial online. I'm just telling you what I did. So keep that in mind. There are more detailed videos out there. Now I picked up a few from paracablemods.uk. They have a ton of selection of different colors and patterns and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. So you can customize that to your specific setup theme or your mouse color and stuff. So I picked up a few different ones for my Ultralight 2, the Viper and the Model O, just so I could you know, have them for later on down the road and potentially future videos. When you're buying your cables, you have to specify which mouse this is gonna be for, so that way they can provide the proper fitting and the connector for that mouse. But I measured the distance of the cables of where it plugs into the actual PCB on the mouse to where the backside of the shell uh, feeds the actual cable outward. There are two rubber black pieces plus a clear rubber piece, and that's gonna keep the cables intact underneath. So once I got it measured and connected inside the mouse, I took a lighter and used the blue portion of the flame to sort of melt down the cable and let it shrink, you know, like a heat shrink. That's essentially what this is. Now, obviously you don't want to do this for too long. You also want to keep the lighter moving so it's not physically burning it. But again, this helps the cable stay in place. Then that clear fitting you want to melt down, that's going to be so the cable sticks into the actual shell. There's a little cutout there in this shell here. So it'll fit right in and it'll keep the cable and the actual braiding on the cable from bunching up. So the cable's in place, the scroll wheel's in place. All that's left to do is put the shell back together, snap it into place, put the screws back in, and reapply the feet or a new set of feet. Now, one of the, quote, features to the Ultralight 2 are those foam posit stickers. It's those foam cutouts that they have that you can put on each side to, you know, make it fit your grip. And while, yeah, it's a good idea, uh, fact is, people have been doing this in the mask community for years with bat grip, like for a baseball bat. And just to show you guys some examples I found online, people have been doing this for a while, and it can really make your mouse look pretty cool and different. I picked up a few from Lizard Skins. They have tons of different colors and 
color patterns and stuff as well. So if you really want to, you know, get a funky, cool design going on, odds are they have that. Tons of colors to pick from. And also different thicknesses from one millimeter, 1.2, 1.5, two millimeters. Again, depending on how thick you want this grip to be. But this teal one I got was from Andy's Forest. And again, it was just, you know, on Amazon. It's made for a baseball bat, but it's gonna work out here. So I pretty much just traced the actual shape of the uh, skins that come with the Ultralight 2. Trace that on the bottom of the teal skins that I have so I could have like a mirrored cutout. And then it's the same exact thing. You cut them out, you take off the 3M uh, protective tape on the backside, and you can now stick it on your mouse and begin to build it up to fit your grip, your play style. Now, obviously these grips are optional. You can really put them wherever you want and cut out whatever shape you want, but the possibility is there and it's a good way to mod your mouse. When comparing it to the stock Ultralight 2, I prefer this 10 times out of 10. And due to the white balance, they actually don't look too different in terms of color, but in person, uh, the, the color difference is definitely more apparent. So matching the white cable to the white shell, matching the teal scroll wheel to the grips. Moving on, it's time to do some mods now to the Razer Viper mouse. Now again, it starts with using a hair dryer to start to loosen up the feet on the bottom. But unlike the Ultralight 2, we're actually going to apply heat to the top and bottom feet because this one has screws on the top and bottom. And since these feet are larger, and there's also one around the sensor, um, they're gonna be pretty damaged once you get them off. But don't worry, this is where we're gonna be applying the aftermarket skates as well, and they're gonna be much better than these stock Teflon ones. As a matter of fact, like the feet that come on the mouse as it is were probably my main complaint when I reviewed this mouse a few months ago. So applying the aftermarket skates is gonna make it 10 times better. So once these skates are off, and again, you remove the screws, this time when you start to pry apart the shell, there is gonna be a ribbon cable connecting the top to the bottom because you do have the RGB lighting for the Razer logo there. You'll see where it's connected. You can just simply unplug it. Now the Viper also has screws securing the PCB to the bottom part of the mouse. So you obviously have to undo those as well so you can take off the PCB because the cable runs pretty deep underneath. Do pay attention though to where the cable is routed and how they routed it because you're going to want to repeat the same process. I figured for the Viper, you know, Razer kind of go with that neon green and black color cable. This one in particular is called Decay, but they have a few different green and black color combos on their website. So for this one on the stock cable, there's actually a pretty decently sized fitting that they use to connect the mouse to the inside of the shell to prevent it from coming loose or falling out. So this is just a matter of, again, swapping out the cable, making sure the fitting is gonna butt up against the top of the shell there to where it routes out, properly route the inside of the cable underneath the PCB so it's not getting in the way of anything and also not coming in contact with the scroll wheel. And it'll then plug right back into where it was on the PCB. Using all the screws and stuff, reapply the PCB to the bottom of the frame, put back on the top shell, screw it all back in. But again, now we can apply those third-party skates. These are from Tiger Arc, and they have tons of different like hyperglides and skates for tons of different mice out there. I've bought all my aftermarket skates from them in the past, and they're really, really buttery smooth. Again, it's Teflon. It's a different type of mixture. So it's the blend of Teflon and PTFE that matter when it comes to forming these aftermarket skates. And that's why I like these, because they are so smooth. They really glide. Just reapply the top and bottom foot, plus a foot around the sensor, and we're golden. Again, addressing like the only complaint I had on the original Viper. So now that that's all done, we're gonna use the other pack of lizard skins that I have. I just got, you know, plain black ones. Again, there are tons of different colors and, you know, pattern combinations you could pick from, but I figured for this, nothing too crazy since the cable itself already has some color into it. So why not go for like, you know, kind of like a stealth look with the black lizard skins? And since the sides of the Viper already have a rubber texture on it, I just wanted to add some extra grip to the left and right mouse clicks. Again, all completely optional. You can cut whatever size you want, put them wherever you want on the mouse, but I'm just doing left and right clicks. Then the last mod is gonna cost you like a dollar from your dollar store, and that is using zip ties to make kind of like a zip tie mouse bungee in a way. It works pretty nicely and uh, it's a pretty cool little trick. The application to this is pretty straightforward and obviously uh, it's meant to prevent any cable drag when you're using it, but since it's a paracord, it's already very lightweight and flexible. This just adding to that. You wanna put a zip tie on the bottom right where it butts up against the top part of the mouse and close it all the way. And then where part of the leftover zip tie is facing upward, you're gonna want to route another zip tie around there. Bunch the mouse up, maybe like a half an inch vertically. Tighten that zip tie so the two are kind of forming together for like a support bracket, if you 
Think of it like that. And then you can just cut off the remaining zip ties that's not going to affect the support here. And again, in return, you sort of have like a fake mouse bungee for a dollar. And it actually works pretty well. It'll keep around like six inches or so of the para cable elevated in the front. Again, so you don't have to worry about it getting bunched up anywhere or snagging or anything. But these para cables are very lightweight and flexible as it is, so it's not necessary. But for those who do use a mouse bungee, maybe you don't want it taking up any more space in your desktop anymore for a dollar or for free if you have some of these lying around your house. Odds are you probably do. And the last real thing I wanna talk about isn't necessarily a mouse mod, but a compliment to your mouse, and that is a mouse pad. There are tons of different ones out there, different textures and surfaces, and it could really enhance the overall experience of your mouse, especially complementing the uh, skates on the bottom. So if you're like me, maybe you just had a cloth mouse pad for years and you never thought twice about it, but it wasn't until I started picking up different mouse pads out there that uh, it really sort of, you know, made sense. Yeah, different materials are gonna benefit your mouse. But there are four in particular that I'm gonna quickly go over. Two cloth and two hybrids. So first is the Thor mouse pad from X-Ray Pad. It's gonna mimic all your properties of a regular cloth mouse pad, but something about it just feels a lot smoother. Usually for heavier mice, you might want to gravitate towards a cloth mouse pad so you have more of that control. Because on something like a hard surface or a plastic surface mouse pad, you don't have that control. It glides a lot easier. I've never ever liked plastic mouse pads. And the one that I'm getting questions about all day, every single day, is this custom mouse pad. This is my collaboration with Novel Keys to bring you guys a really cool topographic design to the mouse pad. I've always liked topographic patterns. And guess what? It drops today. You can finally pick it up. It's the full extended version with nice stitching on the side so it doesn't come unbraided. The cloth material feels really nice and smooth. And it's only $20. I'm not gonna charge you an arm and a leg for this. So rejoice, it's finally here. And then for two hybrid mouse pads that I think are absolutely fantastic for lightweight gaming mice that have these hyperglides or like G-Skate equivalent feet on the bottom of the mice. One is the Glide 38 from Mad Cats and the Amp 500 from Gigabyte. And they're called hybrid mouse pads because it's a very unique texture for the surface. It's like a soft touch rubber in a way, and it's just a really nice in-between spot of a plastic harder surface and a cloth surface. You really get the best of both worlds because it feels really smooth on your mouse, but also complements a lightweight mouse and the mouse feet by letting you flick very easily. You can still get that nice, you know, precise control, but have those quick movements because of the surface. Also an advantage of these is that they're like water resistant and stuff, easily washable. And the bottoms of each are made of silicone so they don't slide around on your desktop, it stays put. So what do you guys think? Do you like the end result of these mice? And do you want to see me do more kind of DIY mouse mods videos like this in the future? Let me know. But to kind of recap real quick, again, all white shell now in the ultralight too, matching white para cable, the teal silicone band for the scrolling wheel with matching teal grips for the side. Then on the Viper, some lizard skins for extra grip, the uh, tiger arc feet on the bottom, again, paracord cable, and a makeshift mouse bungee with zip ties. So like I said, not a tutorial by any means, just showing you what I'm doing and the possibility of modding your mice. So like I said, if you like this video, let me know, give it a big thumbs up, comment on your suggestions on any mods ideas you might have or things you might wanna see me do later on down the road. Figured it would be a fun idea. Feel free to hit me up and follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed, have a good day.